Wow, welcome to Unlimited Treasure YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for continuing to be a part of the journey with us. My name really is Kai Pali Treasure. My same name is Meku. Yes, today we are doing a recap of this basic concept of information technology. May I just advise that this recording may be a bit quicker. So if you need to maybe go back and have more details in some of what we've already touched, there are other clips that we have already loaded. So you can go back to the three previous clips that I did more detail on, right? So this is more of a summary. Um, and then we're going to get into the practicals of word. Next time, then we're going to do word and PowerPoint, and whatever else you manage to do, right? Um, I hope you're coming right with your assignments. I hope you're coming right with preparing for your exams. And on our YouTube channel, guys, feel free to ask questions. And where possible, I will try to see what else we can do you know i just very much depend you are the one who is learning through this you are a student so do comment ask questions and let's see what we can do right um we've touched on what a computer is it's an electronic device that is used to input process and output data right so this definitions become important guys some of your institutions may have a multiple choice uh, this is more of the guidance as well, right? So know your definitions. Like I said, I think one of the things I stressed in the previous clips is really that as an academic, it's very important that you know how to define. For your assignments, you define and write in the Harvard way of writing, Harvard referencing, and which means in this case, you say something like according to treasure in leo 2017 page 20, 2008 a uh, computer is defined as an electronic device that is used to process data converting data to information that is useful to people that's how you write in your assignments right and then you from definition you get into it your flow must be introduction body and conclusion and you keep on referencing referencing and we learn to paraphrase not really quoting every word that authors say but putting it in our own words but we, we still highlight the fact that we still recognize it, right we don't want to plagiarize in an exam however you don't have to quote your authors you don't have to tell us where you learned that from you can just basically say a computer is a, mach is a machine that is used to input process and out and output information for an exam that will be enough but what remains important is that even an exam learn to to flow very well introduction body conclusion don't get used to a lot of points as we mark even where we don't see enough points or maybe you need one mark to pass, you can still go into your essay, you know, into your essay, not into your bullet points. If I've already marked your bullet point and you need one or two marks to pass or to get that A, then where am I going to find the marks? <laughs> Lecturers don't many lecture about guys. So let's just learn to flow through an essay then. Uh, the more you get used to doing that actually when you do it within your assignments you are getting ready for when you do your master's and doctoral studies because Harvard referencing is the way to go right so you learn it now you're preparing yourself for the future it's not a waste of time so keep on learning it and then learning to flow that way conveying a story in that way it just makes you a better storyteller we, we still keep on learning to be better storytellers every day. So you start learning now, you will become so much better, even as you progress in your career. All right. Every level needs a good storyteller. Okay. So then we, <clears throat> let's get into it. Computer, 
that's what it is i'm just gonna quickly go through a summary guys the types of computers remember the types of computers right as you can see them on the screen uh, remember how to explain them know how to explain a laptop know how to say a few things about a laptop especially for you guys who are writing exams please uh, read your books go through these things understand what they mean so that you don't get suppressed when you write exams i know it is the lockdown and this course is really i mean i'm really recording these things because we have the lockdown we are on the lockdown but i believe that your institutions will be able to i know with assignments you are continuing you are submitting your assignments with your exams you should be able to communicate and really say if you're going to write exams online so just be ready you're better off ready than anything right remember those main parts of a pc these are the hardware. remember we talked about hardware and software so in hardware we have those parts of a computer your keyboard monitor mouse and all these things okay know them okay know them you are better off knowing them like i said it's a summary recap version of everything right and i'm also i'm really going through the slides you can see them so you will be able to see them as we go then i highlighted things that are very important about starting the computer and i really said if you have a removable media like a if you have a slot where you can input your CD, always make sure that when you start your computer, there's no CD inside because it's going to boot from there and you're going to keep on seeing the black screen and you may end up taking your computer to someone who's going to charge you thousands just for that. So just be cautious of that. All right. <clears throat> we already talked about hardware um, and some of those things that we discussed when we talked about main parts of a computer, right? Know what a CPU is and all those things. Then there are input and output devices. Do you know how to define an input device? Can you pass and define it? Okay. This is also just that recording where you must keep on pausing and ask yourself questions as you prepare. You know, there's studying and then there's preparation, right? Studying is when you're just reading through things, the other clips that you can do. Preparing is when you now start asking yourself questions and see if you are able to answer them. The best way, one of the best ways to also prepare is to find one to three question papers and really give yourself time. If it's an hour question paper, sit in that hour, do that question paper, then see how much you have. You have. Then correct yourself and then tomorrow or two days later, try again, you know, but that's how you prepare. If, if you keep listening to me speaking you'll think you understand if you keep reading just looking at things you think you understand that is why many people get shocked by exams so if you are writing an exam and you're listening to this <coughs> please don't make make sure that the exam is not the first place where you see a question paper please make sure that for that specific subject you have at least seen a minimum of three question papers that would have helped you with a bit of preparation right so please don't don't see a question paper for the first time in an exam that's how people fail don't prepare to fail okay by not finding some question papers to prepare you are indirectly preparing to fail input devices there they are devices that are used to enter information into a computer like your keyboard and mouse and the microphones so know them firstly always remember define and then even an exam even even if you're not asked to define just define stuff Okay, all right, and then output devices. Okay, then output devices, define it as well, be able to define it. Can you define it? You must have defined it by now, right? Used to show information like a monitor, like right now you are looking at an output, right? You are looking at your screen, that's an output. And whether you're using a monitor or you're using a projector, whatever you could be using, all right? So know those things, guys. Know them, know them, know them. We are summarizing. Let me just touch on this pot. Um, there are other fresher pots. Serial pot. And for people who just arrived into the laptop age, um, you may not always know these pots, but... Look to the left and the right of your laptop and you see some ports. The other one where you would normally
be plugged in to present. It's either is a VGA or is a USB. For most laptops now, that's the case. But we have the serial port, the parallel port when you have a desktop, and then the USB port, all of you have it. Then was not here, like I said, is a VGA port. Then we also have um, the other one that's not here. So we can present this one, but then the left and the right of the laptop. If you have a laptop or look, look at the back of your machine, the box, and, and check the posts that are there and get to know what they really mean. But what are their names? If you don't know, any Google different, okay. Just it's it's important to just know, guys, right? Mm. There's another oh another popular one is HDMI port, right? HDMI. We also know it. Some of if your laptop doesn't have a VGA, then it has an HDMI. Know what they are. When a question comes in a <laughs> test and say what does HDMI stand for? Do you know? That multiple choice question, eh? What does HDMI stand for? What is an HDMI port? Do you know? <laughs> Let me leave that to you. So write that down, please, and then get to understand what it is. We are learning, man. Okay. Accessibility. Remember, we spoke about accessibility. Do you remember what accessibility is? <coughs> what did we say accessibility is? It's not about access. It's about how much easy a system is to be used by disabled people. It's a way of making sure that people with limitations, people who are disabled, can also use technology. Like I said, this is very important in every space. If this, what you see on the screen now is accessibility for technology in the technology space, but, but if you are in the building space, we talk about accessibility, are you making sure that this lifts, are you making sure that it's not just steps to access the building? Um, how how does a blind person get into your building? If it's, it's in a hospitality space, what are you doing to make sure that uh, you can still hire disabled people? And you know which disabilities can you take in which one's country? Guys, DNI, DNI, DNI. If you're in HR, what are you doing? If you are in security space, what are you doing? Of course, some, some areas may argue that uh, if I'm hiring someone to be a security, then maybe I need that person to be seen. Or maybe if that person is disabled, he must work at certain hours. So all those things are very important considerations, right? Then we talked about storage. Uh, remember? Storage, right? Storage, storage. Uh, are you going to buy a 500, a 1,000 gigs? For thousand rand, or are you going to buy a terabyte for one point five? Can you answer that question? A thousand gigs for one thousand rand, a one terabyte for one point five. And like I said, the, in most cases, the question, the answer becomes a terabyte. But what's the difference between a thousand gigs and a terabyte? Pause. Think about it. Know these things, guys, as you make those decisions to buy uh, external hard drive, external storage. These things become very important. Don't be cheated. Don't just pay a lot of money because you hear the word terabyte. A thousand gigs and a terabyte is pretty much the same thing. If you. That's the difference. Okay. Then you know the storage devices, guys. When you talk storage, let it be storage, not memory. Now talk about memory, talk about storage. Removable, non-removable. Removable, the ones you can carry about like your USBs and CDs. Non-removables, they are inside, like the internal hard disk, the cloud service. Those are your, your non-removable storage. That is it about storage. Okay, don't be confused. Um, you know, the internal hard disk and the external hard disk. It's okay to still talk about floppies as long as you know what you're going to say about them. They're not reliable. And really, the new laptops and the newer computers don't come with them. People like me with old computer, very old desktop that we still have. There is a slot for a floppy disk, but 
I can't go out to buy floppy disk. I don't even know if they're still sold. So get to know these things on file st uh, online file storage. Get to know those things. Get to understand what the cloud is. Write it down. Read more about the cloud. Uh, how you can save things. How you can back up information in external storage and also in the non-removable storage, which is like the cloud, how you can make sure your phone is backed up, how you can make sure that your laptop is backed up. The importance of backup, guys. We spoke about it. Please, back up, back up, back up. We, we don't want to be embarrassed, especially on the work front. On your personal life, I don't know, you can still cry and be fine later, but at work, make this a disciplinary just because you're going live and you did not back up. And they happen to have stolen your laptop or it happened to crash at the wrong time. Okay, so back up, back up, back up. <coughs> Memory, RAM and ROM. Again, we spoke about this, guys. Do you do you still remember what they are? RAM, random access memory. ROM, read only memory. Think about it. So, RAM. Go back to that recording, guys. Um, it was posted on, I think, the 10th. <clears throat> and get to understand these things. If you still do not understand uh, the 9th. Yes, the 9th. There was a clip on that we did on Ram and Ram as well. So go, go to the Unlimited Treasure YouTube channel. There's a lot of detail there. All right, this is very key for you to know, right? And understand with why is RAM volatile? Why is ROM not volatile? You know, what is the difference between the two? Can you write for 10 marks about two? You know, very important. Test yourself, guys. Test yourself. If you're writing exams, even more so, test yourself. <clears throat> so the same. Computer performance. Um, we were talking about RAM right now. Remember, these factors are a combination of what contributes to computer performance. The CPU speed, the RAM size, how to speed and capacity, number of applications running. Remember what we said about RAM. When we have a lot of applications running, it starts lowering your computer. That's because that's the, re the relationship between the number of applications running or multiple uh, multiple applications running on the computer and RAM because the more you open many things then you are cluttering your RAM you know you, you keep on every time you open a, your app, an application RAM size goes down you open two three four five your RAM size goes down 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 and it gets to a point where your computer is hanging because you have no RAM anymore you have no waking memory anymore and we said you must close these applications if you are not using them we said you must also save uh, your work because if it's still not saved it's not stored it's still in memory it's still using ram so the more you save things the more you release them from ram to storage right please get to understand these things and of course do ask the slip you are looking at it on youtube unlimited treasure channel subscribe comment ask questions feel free please let's help you the whole point of this is to assist you okay then we talked about software and uh, software yeah and hardware right what is software <laughs> hope you answered what software is and what is hardware I hope you have also answered what hardware is. Know the difference. Know the difference. Test yourself. So two types of software. Operating system software and application system. Application software. Do you know the difference? Which one is loaded first? Operating system software. Can a, can a computer operate without operating system software? I hope your answer was no. Was no, it cannot actually. If you go to a shop and buy a computer and it doesn't have operating system software, you don't have a computer, you just have a let's call it a shell. Okay, and here you can have operating system software, even if you have the application software, even if you know what, 
what applications you want to load in your computer. If you don't have operating system software, you will not start. So actually, if you don't find it from a friend or someone can do a favor or you can buy it, you have the money to buy it, you are going to pack your laptop. You are just definitely going to pack your laptop for while you're still saving for the money to do it. So like I said last time, please, please make sure that when you go and buy a laptop, you ask them to in, for a laptop that has this already. It's, it's complex to try and install this on your own. Guys, please don't try it. Unless you really know someone who's an IT expert, buy a laptop that has that already has this operating system. Okay. Okay, and then this application software. Of course, this once you have already loaded the OS, then this comes. Remember, OS is like your iOS on your phone or Android on your phone. So here now, it's a matter of now you have done the OS, the first part. Now you can load your WhatsApp, your Word spreadsheet, and, and all that. But again, what I said about the Microsoft Office package. If you don't know anyone who has it or you know you don't have it, again, try and ask them at the shop to help you with that because it can also get expensive. You're better off negotiating with a shop where you're buying a laptop or maybe you can get a better deal. But it can also be expensive, up to 4000 about. Okay, so these are just some of the examples. Your Word, your spreadsheet, your database, you know them, right? Your WhatsApp, right? Okay. Let's just try to help you solve some problems in your computer. This is one part that uh, would like you to play around with your computer. I wish I was in class <laughs> to do this one, but let's try some things. Uh, I obviously want pause, so as you go through this, pause, uh, do these things on your computer, all right? So if you go into control panel, uh, you you'll, if you want to know where some of these hardware things are, like your printers, modem, networks, this is where you'll find it. So if, if you don't even know how to do it, at the bottom of your computer, there's somewhere where it says type here next to your Windows button. Just type control panel B. And then it will then you it will show you, then you just open those things, right? So that's pretty much how it works. If you want to see to install programs or uninstall them, you know, if you want to set the background of your computer, if you want to set your clock and all those things, your time, if your time is not right, all those things. Play around with your computer. Go to your com control panel. Go to your My Computer. Right-click on that thing and get to play around to know how what works. Right. And you can also do the control alt delete and it will take you to the similar to this depending on how recent is your OS and you'll see applications you'll see processes if you happen to be using the earlier I think the screenshot is a bit old just type task manager at the bottom guys at the bottom somewhere on your bottom left and there's some way which says type here to search, just write task manager and it will show you, right? And then you go there, you get to understand all these things. Sometimes if you have processes that are hanging, you need to know how to end these processes so that you release your computer, you make sure your RAM is working properly. <laughs> so play around your computer and learn these things. You click on all these tabs that you can see your application, you can see processes, you can see your services, you can see your performances and all that, right? The other thing is, is really to get used to, to playing around it. You also, I also ask you to go to your my computer, wait for it in my computer, know where that is, <laughs> and then you right click and then you go to properties. 
get to know how much hardware you have, the RAM and and the likes. Right. Uh, let's go. Information networks. We spoke about this LAN, WAN, and wireless LAN. Local area network. Networking is really two or more computers connected together. It's called a network, guys. We are summarizing, right? <laughs> We're going quickly and we new stuff. Questions? Feel free to ask. Just because it's a recap doesn't mean you can't ask. Of course, it will be better if you go to the previous clips and get detailed information. But if you want to ask, still ask, okay? Here for you. So that's a network, and then we have a LAN, we have a WAN, we have LAN, PAN, all different types, right? So when you get to work and you have to plug that cord that's next to your phone, to your if you have to plug that cord to your computer, it means you're on a LAN. If you can still get to work and connect wirelessly without plugging that thing, while at some point you used to plug it, then it means you're on a wireless LAN. All right, and then wide area is like your different offices, the network of computers connected, but over a longer distance, right? So get to read about these things. A lot of information is there. <clears throat> uh, I'm quickly going to browse through this. Uh, most of the older people would know where we started with ISDN when we... You know, network. You couldn't both talk on the phone and be on the internet. So, and then there was an improvement that you could do both. That was ADSL, and then there was DSL. Then we are on wireless networks. There's all the guys. There's broadband. <coughs> Ask your company what they are using. Not everyone is on fiber, right? Satellite, we said that's a special case, it's expensive, it's used in very remote areas, right? So get to know those. Then there's internet, intranet, and extranet. Internet, global network of, networks of interconnected networks. That's what most people use, right? You can use it to communicate, to shop, to search for information, for a whole lot, right? Then there's an intranet. An intranet is that thing that you have at your workplace, the private network of an organization. So get to understand that, understand why you and your group of colleagues have information that is only specific to you, not visitor, no visitor can see it, other people in other organizations can see it. So it's not just the internet, not anyone can see it, it's only you guys, and you are authorized because you have logins and passwords to this thing. Then there's extra net where you have maybe your suppliers who are assisting the company in some way or another. They also have usernames and a password. And if it's a stationary supplier, they will see information related to that. If it's a fuel supplier, they'll see information related to that. So it's specific to what they do. Otherwise, if there's general information about suppliers, then you'll then you'll be all be able to see it. Okay. And as I said with an extra extra net, because we're talking supplier. And we can talk about supply chain management because what then happens is that if you want to do your just in time, time deliveries, you then send notifications, you do your SLAs, you agree that when you have 50 pens left, you deliver within three days, you know that you won't run out, things like that. You agree, you don't get to a petrol station and there's no petrol because the person was supposed to tell them I can leave. Gone are those days, guys. Let's assist our companies to become better if they're not there yet. It's a process. <clears throat> email, guys, you all use email, right? It's for communication, it's an electronic message sent over the internet. So, another much about this. Do you know what an email is? But do you know those big questions? You're going to see a question that says, Which one of this is an email? In your multiple choice question. And then you are confused. So, students, can be funny. <laughs> And then you are there, sitting for two minutes, thinking, what is an email? And you use it every day. Okay. Guys, let's do it. Let's, let's, get, let's get this right. Computers at work. What do you use a computer for? There's a lot of things you use a computer for. It's even the things that are not written here. E-learning, e-banking. I mean, now we're doing this via YouTube. We are learning online. It was not meant to be that way initially, but it's possible. Now we know. You can now... Coronavirus has forced us to be working from home or teleworking, and 
oof, companies are exposed, you know, some people just can't work from home. The networks, some of the networks are struggling. Some companies had to buy a lot of SIM cards to give to their employees because they never had to lose that. So it's, I think now you can write an essay about working from home. So those are some of the things that computers can be used for and what the internet can assist us, what networks can assist us to achieve, right? So let's get to the next of working from home and all that, it's fine. You understand these things. Then let's go to, you know, when you're sharing, you know how you can share, right? Facebook, your podcasts, you share your Skype a lot of ways. Guys, if it's not written here, it doesn't mean it's not the way of doing it. If you know it, especially with you guys who are writing exams, please don't freeze in exams. If 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 you are being asked the question, how can you share information via the internet? Really relax your mind and say all those things. It's not new to you know it. Actually, you know it very well. Social networking inside, virtual communications, just one of those things, guys, precautions. Remember, internet is out there, but not everything about it is good. Uh, there's laws that are coming into place. If you have kids, even worse, you need to watch and be and teach them these things and teach them that not everyone who tries to be nice to you is nice. It is getting complex. So it's important, very important that we be careful when you're sending personal information. Hey, it's getting deeper. We're talking about security on the previous clip, guys. Please, let's just do our best to <coughs> teach our children, to teach ourselves, to teach our siblings, to beware of strangers, and all those things. Guys, you can't even post. Right now, it's law in South Africa. You can't post a naked. You're not allowed. People still do it, but I think they don't know, and maybe the law is not well enforced. You have a young baby now you can't be posting them naked because you know those crazy people who just decide to take naked kids pictures and do things to themselves in those pictures like if you didn't know now you know please stop posting pictures of naked babies i know it, it should be something that is beautiful really but our world has changed so much so it's one of those things let's just be cautious of all these many things um especially with our younger siblings and younger kids okay health and safety guys i'm a wellness person and i advocate so guys if we're using these computers let's be careful of how we sit let's it's called ergonomics you know uh, so let's just try and understand the fact that Computers are good and well, but your back, you can have end up having a painful back. Actually, if you go around, okay, now we still have coronavirus in South Africa until we are locked down until the until month end of April. But actually, there may be another extension. We don't know. We wait to hear from our great president, who's really doing so well to put us as number one. You know, it's it's tough times, but. We are grateful. So, but as you go back, I hope you have relaxed. Mo many people don't walk straight because, especially if they carry backpacks, you know, the first day it's a laptop. And then the second day is a laptop and you realize that you needed a book for notes. And then from there you decide that you don't want to carry two bags and you put things and you end up putting things. And now it's a heavy bag and then you try to support it. Uh, and then. You even bend it to the front as you walk. Many people walk like that. You just give it a two, two, three months after the lockdown and try and see it. And if you think about it, you may actually realize. So just it's, not, it's just about, you know, make sure your chair is right. Keep standing up. Don't sit down for a very long time the whole day. Make sure your skin resolution is good for your eyes. You know, people end up struggling with lights and they look at the laptop the whole day. It's not a problem to be working on the laptop every day. It's just that we don't take breaks. We don't adjust our screens properly. Sometimes it's too bright. It affects the eyes, you know. Again, let's just be cautious as we use these computers, okay? Um...
security okay guys on the i think on the 14th watch the clip that is loaded on the 14th around 12 o'clock security is big on that i mean i'm just gonna quickly go through this very quickly like security this one you need to go to the clip and get the details and you really need to because i'm trying to not make it a long clip but we should just cover this thing, right <clears throat> big one we talked about backup very important that you back up and i'm linking it again to security because whatever we back up we must also make sure that it's protected so we back up safe if you back up something in your flesh make sure that your flesh is encrypted if you back up in your server, make sure it's password protected and you know those things about passwords, how complex they might be and all that. Guys, it's very important. Very important security of the pain of every CIO, CTO, CEO. We know what's going on, on around the world. People just want to get into this. They want to steal information. Uh, it's big. So please and get to learn more about this and make sure that you are password protected you firewall protected and you do a mix of letters and numbers on your passwords you don't use your phone number your child's name and all those things you change your password regularly and you don't tell it to anyone you don't write it down you know it's very very important guys and just make sure that you you're on top of your game if they push those patches uh, don't keep on postponing postponing them you know because you are literally opening for thieves look like check out that other clip that we did on security patch 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 is written and very important guys otherwise you could face serious disciplinary if the thieves enter through your computer because you didn't patch and like i explained that patch is simply making sure that there is no gates or uh, open gates for the thieves so if you don't patch you simply say okay i'm very much aware that there's a thief but hey i'm not gonna close this gate a thief can enter if they want it's it's not right it's not a right way it's un unethical right viruses all these all these are all these things that can get into your computer being sent by people who want to get into your company the network different types look at that clip again unlimited treasure it's written security patch 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 look at that clip it's very detailed guys and take it with your all in your personal life in your work life all right <clears throat> uh, these are just some uh, in that clip you'll still hear about some of them uh, some of the other types of viruses if you also search you'll see even more there's quite a lot quite a lot if you're writing an exam you can be getting to an exam and not understanding security these days it's it's a top topic so you need to know a lot about it um, how to prevent against viruses again you know good antiviruses patching scanning the computer don't just download anything your email attachment, ugh, if you're not expecting it, why open it? I mean, who is it from? Don't don't be told to open things and because they're talking money and all those things. And again, guys, um one thing we don't need to miss is phishing. And it's very big with the banks, right? They will send you a nice link and and say and sometimes the message is just very urgent to say you know you quickly need to change your password because hey, we noticed that there's something that we are not used to that is happening in your account someone may be wanting to get into your account and you will just click on that link but when you look at that link sometimes it doesn't have the s which is very important for https to show that it's a secure site and if you look towards the end if you look at there's, there's a lock sign that's normally on your sites on your secure sites as well so just get used to knowing those things if you get a link that says you need to some, get something first call that bank right call your bank relax don't click on that link quickly and change the password because what happens is as you it's going to say change it and then confirm it or put your password and probably says you must put your password and 
and all that. We're going to put that part to it. Uh, and then they are going to take that password. Worse so, if you are using one password for a lot of things, then you're in trouble because they're going to, within minutes, they're going to test that password on your banking, on your online shopping, everywhere, guys. They could clean you up in a couple of minutes. So please, don't be cleaned out because of these things. Don't click on, on, on those things. If if you really feel that is a strong message, just call your bank, okay? Or, or first call wherever you, or <clears throat> if you're buying a book online, just call them and say, are you the ones really doing this? And if they happen to leave a number on that link, you don't call that one. You call the one that is on the real website, okay? Very important. Guys, security is big. Let's just do our best to get to know some of these things. Okay, copyright. Uh, I'm just going to brush through this. Um, <clears throat> don't have to worry too much about it, but it's also very important because, guys, we can't be copying things. Of course, a lot of software is now you buy on the cloud, you buy online, but you should really, you shouldn't copy <laughs> softwares, right, unless you are Unless it's a kind of software that you are allowed to to copy, all right. Uh, we do have different types of those, like your shareware, freeware, open source. You know, for example, you have open source. You can make changes and improve the software, but with others, you may not have that permission. So it's important to know what kind of software you are having. Freeway is free for use. Just get to understand, you know. <clears throat> Data Protection Act. Guys, things like leaking information, talking about taking your information from your information from your company to another place, or hey, you must be very cautious, hey, and I think that also reminds me because we're talking security issues and data protection act, you know, things we say on social media about our companies, things like those. I mean, the internet age has come up with a lot of challenges, things we put on our social media profiles, and the next thing you go for an interview and they have every right to say, can you open, for us to get to know you, can you open your Facebook account? and. I hope you are able, you are comfortable with whatever they see in there because then they assume that's the real you. If it's all swearing and saying bad things about people and, you know. So let's just be cautious. We, we are our lives everywhere, whether you're online or they meeting you in person. That's why they can now do interview over Skype or Zoom, you know, because really... All these things are available. The world has changed. The world is changing. You see, we're working from home now. So, guys, please, let's just be informed. Let's understand these basic concepts. I have touched as much as possible. I know that most of the universities don't cover as much as I have. But if you happen to have a topic that you feel that we need to talk about more, or you have a question, questions, are the best ways that we can learn, guys. I, as I always say when I do my part-time lecturing classes, uh, we ask questions. There's no stupid question. There's no, you know, what we are here to learn. We ask questions, and we, we really ask questions. And through questions, we learn more and more and more and more and more, right? So, guys, thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, it's a bit long. But it's what we could do to cover up everything. Thank you so much. Please do subscribe to the channel. Be kind and subscribe. Please be kind and subscribe. And let's also share it. Feel free to share it with people who may benefit from it. You really don't mind. And when you have questions, feel free to ask. Okay. Thank you so much. Treasure you.